don't forget, ko-fi.com slash stop writing alone is a real simple way to show your support for what's going on here week after week. Hi, everyone. This is Nicole Rivera, and this is the Stop Writing Alone podcast for writers who are looking for their writing community. I know you want to find readers for your work, but I think your first step is to connect with other writers. That's what we're going to do here at the Stop Writing Alone podcast. We'll do writing prompts and other writing group activities, discover online writing communities, learn how to find local writing groups, or how to make your own. Join us as we explore, learn, and write. Support for the Stop Writing Alone podcast is brought to you by Kim, the coloring book coach. Did you know you can heal your heart and more through coloring and the other fun services Kim offers as a Reiki healer and intuitive? Visit thecoloringbookcoach.com now for your free coloring book and save 15% on any service when you use the code STOPWRITINGALONE15 in the booking notes when you make your appointment at thecoloringbookcoach.com. That's Stop Writing Alone, one five, at thecoloringbookcoach.com. Hi, this is Nicole Rivera, and you're listening to the Stop Writing Alone podcast. When people ask me what it is that I love about writing and why I want to be a writer and you know what, it, what drew me to this passion, I typically answer in the same way. I love story. I love story in all forms. I've, I've discussed it many times in this podcast. I don't just love books, which of course I adore books, but I love story on the screen, on the stage. I love stories as they seep through music. Um, I just love everything that there is about story. And when I dive deeper into what it is that I love about story, it almost always comes back to this idea that um, story builds empathy. Story gives me a view into worlds that I may never experience. And that helps me understand the world better. It helps me understand um my fellow man better and it also helps me understand my own existence in in a clearer way so this summer when um the stop writing alone happy campers got together for the month of july we dedicated ourselves to using as much free time as possible to actual writing because we were doing camp nanorimo but we said for August, we would venture back into reading a book on craft. And we discussed so many different options. It's kind of ridiculous how this almost really spiraled out of control. We were like, what will we read? And everybody had suggestions. And we were all taking pictures of our own bookshelves of books on craft and the books that we've heard about, that we've always wanted to read, and what would be best to read in a group, on and on and on. And one of the books that uh, popped up on the list was Lisa Cron's book, Story Genius. I'd heard of the book. I didn't own it yet. But I hadn't um, really delved into what it was about at all. Um, But after doing a vote, that's what uh, we went with and that's what we started reading this month. And that's what I want to talk to you a little bit about today. I have read part one and a little bit of part two so far, so I haven't finished the book completely. But already I feel like this is going to be one of my number one recommendations for writers who are struggling with their novel and you know where to go next and what's going wrong. I've been like a real fan of um, things like Save the Cat Writes a Novel and looking at structure 
and the hero's journey and things of that nature to help people through finding their way to the beginning, middle, and end of their story. But I think that in doing so, I was taking a lot of things for granted about where we each have been in our own story, in our own understanding of story, and our relationships with the characters in our story. I also feel that I was creating more work for myself and saying um, all of these questions about character and protagonist and things like that could be answered later. So what the heck am I talking about? If you have not read Story Genius, you may be like, what What the heck is this book? So Story Genius by Lisa Cron. Uh, the subtitle is How to Use Brain Science to go beyond outlining and write a riveting novel. So we are looking at what makes a good story. And again, I have not read the entire book, so I can't say what uh, Lisa's advice is for completing an entire novel. But her initial questions that we need to ask and answer about the protagonists that we wish to write about are so spot on. And her initial definition of what story is is so spot on that I'm already passionately in love with the advice that I'm being given here. So there are a couple of different ways that Lisa discusses story. And one of the first ones gets to why story has seeped into culture, seeped into like the human experience in such a deep way that um, we need it. She says on page 11, story was the world's first virtual reality. It allowed us to step out of the present and envision the future so we could plan for the thing that has always scared us more than anything, the unknown, the unexpected. What better way to figure out how to outsmart those potential pouncing predators before they sneak up behind you. So I've been doing a lot of um, talk and being engaged in a lot of conversations around brain science and and how our brains operate, not only in story in, in this book, but also in our own lives and how it, our brains hold us back sometimes um, and not, you know, your brain has your best interests at heart. However, your brain still lives in that age of the predator and everything is about survival and the fears that we have and, and everything that um, we may not act upon usually comes down to your brain in some way trying to protect you from a potential unknown or something that, that on the surface seems really scary. And so what I love about this definition of story is that it delves into that piece of what holds us back and reminds us that in order to teach our brain that some of the stuff is survivable or not as scary as it seems or what have you, we don't have to experience it. We simply have to engage in a story that explores those fears, explores those predators and how to overcome them. She says again, the purpose of story she discusses on page 16. We don't turn to story to escape reality. We turn to story to navigate reality. 
And this whole first section of the book is talking about all these different ways that story is important to the human experience because it's underscoring what our story needs to be about. She says, in a nutshell, a story is about how the things that happen affect someone in pursuit of a difficult goal and how that person changes internally as a result. So she says, and, and this is all on page 17. Let's crack that wide open. What happens in the story is the plot, the surface events of the novel. It's not the same thing as what the story is about, not by a long shot. And this is, I'm always talking about like the capital A about, and then, you know, the about. So plot is what it's about, right? But there is a capital A about, and she gets to that. The someone is the protagonist. And as we'll see, everything that happens in the plot will get its meaning and emotional weight based on how it affects her. Not in general, but in pursuit of a difficult goal. Again, we talk about this very often about specificity and the power of details and the power of really like honing in on something. This is again being underscored that your your protagonist deals with so many different things in their lives, you know. But all of that other stuff is not as important as it is to know how he or she responds in pursuit of this goal. So every single step on the journey is meaningful to their story arc, but also to our interpretation of what is going on in the story. She continues, the difficult goal is at its most basic, what's known as the story problem. All stories revolve around how someone solves a single escalating problem they can't avoid. After all, if it were easy, it wouldn't be a problem. And there wouldn't be a story. It's not merely a surface problem either, but one that causes the protagonist to struggle with a specific internal conflict at every turn. So that at the end, she sees things quite differently than she did at the beginning. And we've heard that bit time and time again, even in the very basic instructions of the storymatic writing prompt games, that like one of the hard fast rules of writing a story for storymatic is that your your protagonist must change from beginning to end of the story. Otherwise it's not a story. It's just like a scene of something. To have a true story so I'm going to go off on a bit of a tangent here but it it is relevant I promise when Lisa Cron goes into this depth about the importance of a character changing and about the things in a story being about um, how it affects her and not just a litany of things that are happening that surface plot. I was reading this book and thinking uh, that makes perfect sense to me because I consume enough good story that I've identified that, right? That, you know, good story is when the people in the story are being affected by the things that are happening. They're not just things happening. So I was, I was thinking to myself as I was reading, I'm like, what is this other thing that she's talking about where, where stuff is just happening and is not affecting anyone? And while I was struggling to sort of understand this, um, my six-year-old son told me a story. And it was complete hilarity. He just went on and on 
he's obsessed with like all his Nintendo games and he was telling me a story about Super Mario with Kirby. These are characters from Nintendo games if you're not as well versed in this insanity as I am. He's naming all characters that, you know, I know and and how they're going from planet to planet and what's going on and and things just keep happening. And then they went to this planet, and then there were more bad guys, and then they defeated them. And then they went to the next planet, and then there were more bad guys, and they defeated them too. And, and sometimes he would toss in, like, how they defeated them, and, you know, lots of details, lots of stuff happening. The story was constantly moving forward, but it wasn't about anything. Because there wasn't a single protagonist that was being changed by any of the events. There wasn't anything that, uh, any deep meaning to what was going on. And as he was sitting there telling me the story, I was, of course, like, yes, and then what? And then what? And this is great, and this is wonderful. But in the back of my mind, it was such a big aha. I was like, oh... This is what story without meaning is. It is literally just things happening one after another. And I think we've all gotten into that loop. Maybe not for an entire writing of a story, right? But you get to a point, if you're panting, right? That you're writing and writing and writing and you go like a couple pages and you're like, well, this is just stuff happening. And I'm not quite sure that it's uh, got any any meat to it, right? So, uh, that was my tangent. <laughs> but I just want you to see that it's like, these things happen to us when we're telling stories. And you've, you've been at a dinner party or whatever where someone's telling you a story and it's going on and on and on and you're like, what is happening here? What is the point? And that's what I think uh, Lisa's book is trying to help us avoid. Help us avoid writing the story where it's not clear what the point is. It's not clear who is being affected. Um, yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, finally, she defines the inter internal change. She says, and, and that internal change, that, my friends, is what the story is actually about. How your protagonist's external dilemma, a.k.a. the plot, changes her world view. So she sums it up and says, story is about what happens internally, not externally. And as the, the happy campers and I were discussing this book tonight, I, I told them, I said, this is what I learned in Pitch Wars. When I, when you when you submit a novel to Pitch Wars, and Pitch Wars is coming back up right now. They did announce their mentors for this year. I'll put a link in the show notes so you can check it out. If you have a completed novel and you would like a chance to work through it with a, a mentor, someone that's, or an author that's already been published or somebody in the publishing industry, Pitch Wars is a pretty cool contest that you can submit your novel and a query letter to four different mentors that have volunteered this year to see if anybody, they each pick one person to work with for a couple of months and just work diligently through your novel to polish it up, to get it to its best self before you pitch the novel to a participating agents uh, in late fall. So if you've been listening to the Stop Writing Alone podcast from the beginning, you've heard that back in 2016, I participated in Pitch Wars. I had my novel, Girl Unplugged, and I had just uh, finished going through revisions, polishing it. To me, I was like, I'm ready to, to bring this novel out into the world. I'm ready to query it. And I happened to find out about this contest. And I said, you know what? I'll use this contest as a practice for my query. And I ended up getting a mentor. And 
it was so amazing because what he pointed out to me in my novel was exactly this. I had a protagonist and lots of things were happening externally, but I wasn't being clear on the page about what was happening internally. And without that, what is the point? And this, you know, this whole book, Story Genius, is pretty much about writing novel length pieces, but this applies to short stories as well. This applies to any story, right? If you're writing a story and you want your protagonist to change from beginning to end, you gotta, you gotta make sure that there's an internal change and that the external plot has to serve that. This is where we get, you know, bogged down. We get, when we look at uh, different story structures, we get really like into the weeds with what's happening externally. And if we're not serving the internal conflict change, uh, you know, feelings and things like that, we don't have story. It's, it's truly fascinating. Which leads me to the second chapter of this book which is still in in the first the first section is like what is story about and what it, what story is and what story isn't guys i'm just gonna read for you the name of chapter two it's called myths galore everything we were taught about writing is wrong and I'm just going to tell you right now, if you have not read this book and you pick it up, whatever technique you've been using for writing, this lady right here, she, she just is like anti it. She's anti all of it. And it was hilarious for me to read this because the first thing she went after was pantsing a novel. And I literally have a doodle in my book of Edward Munch's scream and and I'm just saying oh no <laughs> because that's me I do pantsing and I was like oh this is horrible she's like I'm doing it all wrong but then on the next page she also went after plotting <laughs> and I was like wait what are you talking about if pantsing's wrong and plotting is wrong. What the heck is she talking about? And then you turn the page. And she gets into the myth of external story structure models. And she goes after the hero's journey. And while she doesn't name it specifically, save the cat. And I was like, what is happening? And as I said to to the the Happy Campus Club tonight, tonight, I said, at this point in the book, I was like, either this woman is going to just burn every bridge with me, or this is going to be the most brilliant book I ever read because she just, it's kind of like the table has been all set with all these different things, and I'm getting ready to sit down and eat dinner. And she just came over and and just tossed everything off the, the top of the table. And was like, you know what? Let's start over. <laughs> I'm going to give you a brand new meal. And you're like, what? But what am I supposed to do without all that stuff? She's like, I'm, we're going to start all over. So it's like, well, you better have something good because that was pretty nice china that, <laughs> that I had laid out. So um, this is really uh an interesting read for this this sense after she went after the story structure she then honed in on one of the issues that so many of us have and that is when do you start your story and and how many people start too early and um you know she said you can't have an after without a before and she talks about how we do need to start in the middle of a thing um, and that none of our stories actually begin on page one. 
because we're dealing with character change and who our protagonist is before our story begins. And I think that this is why so many of us start our stories too early because we are trying to go back to like, what's the thing that made my, my protagonist want or need whatever is about to happen in this story. Well, she's, she sort of admits that like, yes, the story starts like way before. Um, but we don't put that on the page, but we still need to know it. She says at its most basic, a story is about how someone grapples with a problem they can't avoid and how they change in the process. Understanding that truth will make the difference between spending years writing a highly polished but ultimately dull rendition of, quote, things that happen and a riveting novel that readers won't be able to put down. She says you can't write about how someone changes unless you know specifically what they're changing from. And this is really where part one ends off. All of this defining of story, defining of, of the myths, and why all these things that we've been learning and studying are steering us in the wrong direction. And then part two gets into what are the right questions that we need to be asking? Because it's really where it all, all becomes clear. This is a, you know, an old adage from teaching and from all parts of life, right? You will get the right answers only when you start to learn to ask the right questions. And I don't want to make this episode too long. And I do want everybody to try to get their hands on this book, even as just a different way to think about how you're doing your writing. So at least this week, I'm not going to go into part two, which is creating the inside story. Um, because that is when a lot of questions start getting answered and asked. Um, and what I would recommend is that if you grab this book, have a story idea in mind, either something that you've been writing and you're struggling with or that new idea that's just sort of starting to be born that you think might be something. Bring that with you on the journey of reading Story Genius. And everything that I've just discussed here in, in part one of the book is not affected by whether or not you have a story idea to work with right now. But as you enter into part two of the book, each time Lisa starts to discuss something that is important about building story, she says, okay, now you do it. Now do this and answer this question about your story idea, about your protagonist, about, you know, the, the what if of it all. It's really quite fascinating. And I have been going through this book right now with a story idea that I just started to really um, play with. I don't even know if it was this past year or the year before. But I never really got to fully flesh it out. So um, it's not something that I'm reworking but it's something that I'm hoping I'm I'm curious. Like I said, I'm not I haven't finished the book yet, so I'm not really sure where I'm gonna end off at the end of this reading, but I'm hoping that by the end of this book I will have a clear vision that I can write this book in 
um, in the fall, in the fall and, and move forward with it. But um, I highly, highly recommend Story Genius by Lisa Crone. I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago that I set up a bookshop at bookshop.org, a Stop Writing Alone bookshop. Um, so I will put the link in the show notes. If you go there, you will see there's different shelves, and one of the shelves is the Happy Campers reading list, and that's where you'll find Story Genius. You'll probably find it in another section as well, or books on craft or what have you. But if you use the, the, um, the link in bookshop.org, not only are you supporting uh, stop writing alone, but you are also supporting local bookstores. I love everything about bookshop.org for this reason. Um, and I will say that I'm an affiliate for this podcast, but you can be one as well. You can just create your own bookshelves and tell your friends and family, like if you, you know, if you want to, uh, know the books that I'm reading or what have you, and you want to support local bookstores, here's a link. And then they can, um, help out local bookstores, but also help you out on your, on your writing journey. So, um, yeah, I would greatly appreciate that if, if you're doing any book shopping to check out those links. Um, because it's it's a really great company. Their customer service has been great. I just really appreciate it, and I love that I'm able to support local bookshops in this way. Uh, another great thing that you could do if you haven't already, and I've mentioned this before, is uh, write a review for the Stop Writing Alone podcast, either in Apple Podcasts or over in Spotify. Spotify, I do believe, has a a place for you to write reviews these days, so that would be helpful. Um, and tell a friend, you have a writing friend that needs to stop writing alone. This might be their step one. Aside from podcast news, I will say in the next couple of weeks, if you're not already in the stop writing alone Facebook group, uh, I would come and ask to join groups are private, or at least that group is private. So you do have to ask to join. Because in the coming weeks, I am going to be running a couple of surveys to see how Stop Writing Alone can serve you best in the months ahead. What is it that you think you need? Or do you want to be a part of these types of book discussions? Do you need more writing opportunities where you're writing in community? Do you need some accountability and goal setting? Are you just a super fan like I am of writing prompts or is there something else? If you have an idea and you want to just shoot me an email, of course you could always write to stop writing alone at gmail.com. Um, but also, like I said, I will be developing uh, a survey upcoming because I am going to be building out the stop writing alone calendar in the coming weeks. And I want to make sure that I have input from the audience, from the community, of what I can do to show up in my best way for you. And I'm trying to think if there's something that I missed and something that uh, I need to add or subtract or what have you. But the stuff that we've been doing in the Happy Campers Club, which has been, you know, I think the largest we ever got was like 12 people. I think right now we're at 10 or 11. It has been so amazing just to um, connect with fellow writers in this way. So, um, I just want to provide more of that for everyone out there, but I do want to know what it is you need. Finally, this is, uh, a weird week for me again. I feel like all weeks are weird in the summer for me, but, um, I am not home. We are on vacation, but I will still be showing up on Friday on the Envy Rivera YouTube channel with a new writing prompt for um, for anyone, but particularly for anyone who is trying to write 52 short stories in 52 weeks. So I hope that you will come on over to the channel, check it out, subscribe if it applies to you, and like the video, and write a new short story. 
It's, uh, the more we write, the more practice we get. And you never know. This might be the story that is just, you know, so good that you are ready to go submit it, get published, be out there in um, the big bad world of print. Otherwise, I can't thank you enough for coming to listen to the Stop Writing Alone podcast. I hope you have a fantastic week. Happy reading. If you're reading any of um, these craft books or anything else, wonderful, engaging in story and all that it gives you. And of course, happy writing. I'll talk to you next week. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe to the Stop Writing Alone podcast wherever you're listening to this episode today. Then connect with us on Facebook at Stop Writing Alone Facebook page or in the Stop Writing Alone with Nicole Rivera Facebook group. Check Instagram or Twitter where I'm at NV underscore Rivera to find links to our email newsletter. Happy writing. See you next week.